Welcome to a special bonus episode of Above Deck. I'm Sarah Goldman, a photographer and former marine biologist living in Charleston, South Carolina, and with me is my college roommate and co-host, Kelly. I'm Kelly Busby, an executive assistant and former radio host living in Columbus. Today, we are talking to the Norma Treese, the person Captain Sandy calls when she needs to hire crew on Below Deck Med. She's had a fascinating career, and we can't wait to ask her all of our questions about the yachting industry and Below Deck. Please enjoy this chat with the very mysterious Norma from Below Deck Med. Okay. Hi, Norma. Hey. How are you? Uh, I'm great. Can you hear me and everything? Yeah, we yes. can hear you and see you. Looks good. I'm Sarah. Hi, Sarah. And I'm nice Kelly. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for doing this today. Well, thank you. It's my great pleasure. Are you in Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, I am. That's my main home. Okay. Cool. Your main home. Does that mean you have multiple homes or you just travel a lot? It's been my main home for a very long time, but also mm -hmm. for, uh, I grew up in a diplomatic family. So I was, long story short, um, I was born in one place and grew up in another place. And so, but I, I had a, a secondary home in Antibes in the South of France for many, oh, many years, but amazing. I'd imagine that might be part of the story that you want to hear. We should also say you are a real person. There's this rumor that you are not real. You are. Yeah, there's a there's a big rumor going around and always has been that I'm a production plant and yeah. that, you know, I'm just kind of a source of interest on below deck Mediterranean. Uh -huh. uh, but the reality is uh, I am a real person, the real Norma, Norma Treese, and I'm an old, old friend of Captain Sandy Yon's, and um, that's why uh, she uses my name on the show, because she uh, asked me for advice, and we talk about all kinds of different things. So uh, that's that's it. Uh, here I am, the real Norma. So cool. Love it. So what is your job currently? <laughs> um, I have a lot of different jobs in the yachting industry. Let me give you a little bit of history, if that's okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I started out... Uh, I fell in love with sailing. Um, my dad uh, was in the U.S. diplomatic service, so I was born in South America and I grew up in Paris. And we moved to the D.C. area when I was 13. And my best friend's dad owned a sailboat and uh -huh. took me out sailing when I was about 14. And I fell madly in love with sailing. And I'd always been involved in um, entertaining and cooking and stuff because of my dad's career. So um, when I graduated from college, I went to college in uh, Richmond, Virginia, and in mm -hmm. um, Perugia, Italy, where I uh, furthered wow. my love of cooking. I um, moved to Fort Lauderdale and um, started my career um, on yachts in the yachting world professionally um, as a yacht chef, uh, mate, and stew. And I did that for about 10 years. I worked on uh, large motor yachts, big sailboats small mm -hmm. sailboats. I chartered in the Caribbean. I chartered in the Mediterranean. I had many, many thousands of sea miles. I've done, I'd have to count them up. I think it's seven or eight transatlantics by yacht. Wow. And um, had a wonderful, wonderful career and then decided um, when I was going to uh, turn 30 that um, if I was going to um, get back into the most important thing in life, which is to have a, a love life, um, that I'd better settle down. And I already owned a house in Fort Lauderdale with my sister. Mm -hmm. So um, I started a crew agency called Crew Network because that was basically the only thing that I knew was the people that worked on yachts and what the mm -hmm. jobs involved. And um, over the course of about 12 years, I built that into seven offices in five different countries. Wow. And I sold that to a very large company called uh, Fraser Yachts. It was the first of the service businesses in the yacht industry to sell right. and that's how i got started working with crew and you know the story goes on and on in terms of my business career in yachting yeah oh my gosh so incredible what's your favorite place in the world that you've been on a yacht oh that's a very good question of course i have a huge sentimental attachment to my french hometown in antibes um, yeah. That's kind of like the Fort Lauderdale of the Mediterranean. It's the largest okay. yacht center in the Med. 
And wow. um, I had a secondary home there for almost 20 years. I first sailed in there when I did my first transatlantic on a sailboat when I was 17 years old on a 37 foot sailboat. And I fell in love with Antibes then. It's a very um, ancient town that was settled by the Romans and the Greeks and the Phoenicians. And I always, but in addition, of course, to being a very important yacht port, and mm -hmm. I just loved it. I still love it today. I loved it in all the years I lived there. And of course, just like any other um, big yacht town, I have many, many friends there. That's one of the great things about the yacht industry is, um, you know, the worldwide brother and sisterhood that we have, um, whether you work on a yacht or whether you're in the business of yachting as I am. Wow, that's so incredible. So we got to add that to our list, Kelly, of places yes. to visit. Got it. <laughs> Definitely. Has there been a season of Below Deck Med that was based out of on Antibes, however you say it? Antibes, Antibes. yeah, that's A-N-T-I-B-E-S. Well, actually, um, you know, um, I'm only a consultant um, on a friendly basis with Below Deck. Uh, uh -huh. But one summer I did um, some uh, location sourcing for them. Mm -hmm. And we tried to bring Below Deck Med to Antibes, but instead we took it to a port right around the corner, uh, which was called uh, Juan les Pins and um, okay. Golfe Juan next to that. And that was the um, marina that they worked out of. And that was back when um, they were on the red boat, Scirocco. Um, oh, and that's okay. also a, a, a much smaller town in a smaller port. And, um, you know, but close enough to Antibes. And, and you saw a lot of pictures of Antibes. Uh, for instance, when um, Aisha uh, had a date with Jack, they oh, did that yeah. in, a, in a small romantic restaurant in Antibes. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. So my next question, you kind of already answered it, but how did you end up being associated with Below Deck Med? I know you had a friendship with Sandy going back way back, but how did it come to be that you were on Below Deck Med, at least on the phone? Well, um, it, that's also kind of a long story. Uh, Sandy always tells me that um, I made her famous. And oh. the reality is I met her about 25 years ago when I was working as a yacht journalist uh, mm -hmm. for a magazine called Doc Walk that I helped found and helped sell one of my many business ventures in the yachting industry. Mm -hmm. And I met her at the Monaco Yacht Show. Um, she was on board White Star, the first large yacht that she commanded. Um, mm -hmm. She had been working for a Saudi Arabian prince um, when the, the boat that she had worked for the American owner who built the boat and then was uh, owned by the, the Saudis. And on mm -hmm. the way back, um, and this is a true story, you know, she alludes to it now and again, but um, I'd heard this story that there's a female captain who had had, um, was dead ship in the Red Sea. They had had an engine room fire and they were um, stuck um, dead. Um, on an island um, hidden during Ramadan, and it took about a week for a U.S. warship to rescue them. Rescue oh, them. Oh my gosh! And wow. so I wrote a story about Sandy, mm -hmm. um, telling that story, and um, you know, it of course sparked a lot of interest. It's, I'm it's sure. quite dramatic. Yeah. And ah. shortly thereafter, I wrote another article um, on board one of her yachts, where I gathered together at that point. Um, all the female captains that I could. This was uh, mm -hmm. in Fort Lauderdale after the boat sold. And we got together at that point, about 20 female captains. And I was on board also. I had a captain's license when I worked on yachts, although I didn't actually work as a captain. I was mm -hmm. a, a chef and a mate. And um, so that was uh, the first article I think that I ever saw about female captains. And mm -hmm. of course, nowadays, uh, due to the example of people like Captain Sandy, we have more and more um, female captains on board, which is a fantastic yes. thing. Absolutely. And so long story short, uh, Sandy was um, recruited to take over from Captain Mark on the second mm -hmm. season of Below Deck Med. And um, as I said, we've been we've been great friends um, ever since um, that Monaco Yacht Show when we met. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, she calls me and we talk about all kinds of things, not just about crew, um, but about life and the difficulties of being a captain, about the difficulties mm -hmm. of being a public figure, 
about mm-hmm. the difficulties of working in the business of yachting. And we mm-hmm. also talk a lot about um, something that she and I are both particularly interested in, and that is the great amount of philanthropy and education that we mm-hmm. see in the yacht business. Okay. Wow. So why is it on the other below deck franchises we don't see like somebody's specific name like yours it just says like the crew port or person <laughs> you know it says yeah it says yacht staffing and all yeah. kinds of interesting yeah. things you know you'd have to ask nadine about that i mean okay. that's their decision um yeah. you know the what's really uh interesting to me is i know every single captain um that has been on every franchise of below deck including Captain Mark that uh, Sandy took over from, who unfortunately passed away a couple yeah. of years ago. Um, but I had the the chance to go um, sailing with Glenn on Parsifal cool. in um, the St. Bart's Bucket many years ago, which was mm-hmm. a great experience. Um, I knew Jason when he was running vessels uh, in the Mediterranean okay. um, and actually was invited on board one time during the Cannes Film Festival. Neat. And wow. Um, of course, Captain Lee, he lives around the corner from me, about uh-huh. literally two, two blocks away from where I'm sitting right now. Um, and um, <laughs> But the one I'm the closest with is Sandy. And uh, uh, Captain Carey, I've gotten to know also. Yeah. I was just at a party with him at the um, Palm Beach Boat Show two weeks ago. And he's a wonderful guy. And I must say, I'm really enjoying um, what he's doing um, as he's taken over from Captain Lee. He's doing a, a fantastic job. And I hope he has a good long run the same way that uh, Sandy and Glenn have been able to. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we love Captain Carey. So would you say that you work for Bravo or is working with Bravo kind of a perk of your day-to-day job? Oh, it's definitely a perk of my day-to-day job. Um, It's The reality is that I feel I'm in a very fortunate position to work in the yachting industry as it is. I work as a consultant. I still do crew placement on a consultancy Mm -hmm. basis. I also do business development. I'm working for a large tech company right now. Um, Mm -hmm. I've had a long career. I helped to build one of the largest super yacht marinas um, in Barcelona. I spent six years doing that. Mm -hmm. I helped uh, develop one of the um, biggest insurance companies that started the very first crew insurance program based out of Monaco. That's called Only Yacht. I work for um, the largest uh, yacht agents in the world, uh, BWA, um, Mm -hmm. helping them figure out new ways in order to do business. And throughout all of that, all of my business career in the yachting industry, which is one of the great things about the industry that it offers so many opportunities to all of us. I've always made sure that every business that I'm associated with in one way or another benefits or positively impacts professional yacht crew. Yeah, um, you've really been such a big advocate for the industry and for crew. I listened to your interview on the Gangplank Report, (laughs) um, the late RIP Gangplank Report. That was a great podcast. Um, So we'll put in the show notes a link to that episode because that was so interesting. And yeah, I love that you, philanthropy has been a big part of it. And just what a fascinating career you've had. Well, thank you. You know, again, it's it's a tribute to the yachting industry as much as it's a tribute to me because the yachting industry, due to the very nature of it, the fact that we are at um, the pointy end of the development of technology, of art, of shipbuilding, um, we're dealing with Um, the most sophisticated, wealthiest people in the world that have very high expectations. So the yachting industry, in order to keep up with the expectations of the principals, UBOs, we also call them, uh, ultimate beneficial owners, we have to stay with them. So the yachting industry is continually um, growing and offers new opportunities. So it's great to work on a yacht and yeah. um, there's about 60,000 professional yacht crew around the world right now, but the wow. business of yachting has grown much faster and much greater in terms of numbers than the people that work on board. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's over probably a half a million people around the world that work in the business of yachting, whether it's 
working um, for yacht builders, developers, mm -hmm. business people. As mm -hmm. I said, I've been involved in um, marinas insurance and um, you know, currently um, I spend most of my time um, as a representative for the International Seakeepers Society. Um, I'm on mm -hmm. the board of directors and I'm on a trustee. And what mm -hmm. we do is we do um, uh, ocean conservation, education, oh, and sustainability. So I speak for them around the world. And we have a discovery fleet of over 200 vessels that travel around the world doing our missions. Oh, and that's, so cool. um, that's something that's super wow. important to me and something yeah. else that's a big part of the yachting world. Yeah, that's so cool. And, um, you know, Captain well, Sandy has a fantastic series of charities. I'm sure you're familiar with those. Have you heard about her fantastic uh, education endeavors? Yes. Uh, well, yes, but tell us about them because people listening may not have heard about them. Well, you know, one of the things I love about Sandy you know, you see her on TV as, um, you know, a, a, a very professional, a very mm -hmm. pointed right. leader and captain. And yeah. she does a great job of exhibiting the leadership that's really necessary in yachting. Mm -hmm. But let's face it, Below Deck is as much about television yeah. as it is about reality. So mm -hmm. Sandy has taken the extremely powerful platform that she has and she has turned it into an opportunity to do good all over the world. And mm -hmm. her um, education foundation with Captain Sandy Charities is absolutely amazing. She started it a couple of years ago and um, she's received a big grant from the state of Florida. They mm -hmm. are finalizing um, an accredited program to bring maritime education to junior high school and high school children yeah, um, in awesome. the state of Florida and hopefully to um, throughout the United States and mm -hmm. maybe who knows, eventually internationally, because one thing that's really important for you and anybody listening to this needs to know is there is a huge demand for serious, professional, full-time yacht crew. And I'm not talking about people that work on below deck. I'm talking right. about the people that, you know, the captains, the mm -hmm. engineers, the mates, the cooks, the stews, the deck yeah. hands that work and live on board yachts full time. And that yeah. is a fantastic career opportunity that can also lead yes. you, just like me, into a long term career in the business of yachting. Yeah, look how many different things you did from where you started. I had no idea about this. I think like most people that's something that Below Deck has helped do is like bring this world, you know, into our living yeah. rooms. I mean, I would have loved, I probably wouldn't have gone to grad school. I would have done this. Like <laughs> I would have just loved to work in this industry. It's so. Well, you know, there, there, there's always a future, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they need any 40 year old deck hands or stews, but that's it that you know entry level tend to start a little bit younger than that <laughs> right. um but definitely there are plenty of people in their 40s 50s even 60s they tend to be a little bit more um senior you know they've climbed up the chain of command mm -hmm. a little bit higher than that um but yeah. again you know i think it's really important to say you know i love below deck as much as anybody does believe me i've mm -hmm. seen every single episode of every single franchise and yeah. uh, even, even my husband, who's not a yachty, watches it with me every single week. Love um, it. What happens on Below Deck is such a concentrated atmosphere. Mm -hmm. that, um, even the what Sandy says, and I think it's true, is that every single thing that you see happen on Below Deck, she has seen happen on a real yacht. Okay. But what happens in terms of you know, the very short term charters, the caliber of the people that come on board, you know, it's not just the crew that's maybe not your typical um, professional yacht crew. Right. But yeah. The guests are a little bit different and definitely the charters are different. <laughs> it's very unusual to have three day charters. You know, most yeah. of the time they're a week or longer. They're called okay. yeah. term charters and they okay. happen all over the world, just like happens on below deck. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, let's be perfectly honest about this. When you work on a yacht, most yachts are dry ships. You're not allowed to drink. You're absolutely mm -hmm. never allowed to drink with guests or when you have guests aboard. 
you're not invited to go out to dinner courtesy of the vessel and drink yourself silly. You're definitely not allowed to use the hot tub. So those are things that they do okay. in order to make it more dramatic and interesting. And let's face it, yeah. the people that are working on below deck, they are working just as hard as regular yacht crew. That is Absolutely. totally, okay. completely realistic. But the rest of it is a little overly dramatized. And yeah. um, that's what gives sometimes below deck a bad reputation within the industry because as much as it has given awareness of the yachting industry to the greater world, um, it has also given kind of a skewed image of what the jobs are like. Um, yeah. You know, it's fantastic if you're getting these huge tips at the end of three or four days. That's not usually the way it works. You have to work a lot harder and, yeah. you know, you don't, you know, the, the pressure that they're put under. I mean, one of the things that I always see as, as a former yacht chef myself, that mm -hmm. I always see as being totally, completely unrelated to reality is that it never happens unless you're, unless you have like an emergency or very mm -hmm. last minute charter, you do not get your provisions the day the charter starts. <laughs> yeah, that sounds crazy. <laughs> it absolutely is crazy. I ended my career working as a freelance yacht chef. So I would be hired to come on board for, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks. And I always had several days in advance for one thing to clean and organize the galley and the storage areas. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And so, you know, when you see that, I feel so sorry for the crew, you know, yeah. they come on board and literally the next day, you know, and mm -hmm. it's not just the chef, it's also the deck department has yeah. to reorganize everything. Yeah. It's Coaching also the, the yeah. stewards have to organize everything and yeah. get it ready. And, um, you know, so that part of it is a little bit unrealistic, but in terms of jobs, it's not just fun and games. And honestly, there's below deck for as wonderful as it is and as entertaining as it is without a doubt. Mm -hmm. I just want anybody who's interested in working on board yachts to understand um, that you have a whole lot more of the hard work aspect of it and a mm -hmm. whole lot less of the hot tub and drinking aspect of it. <laughs> right. Um, we have a few listener questions. Okay. At Tie Dye Dave asks, what criteria on a deckhand or stew's CV makes them stand out to be cast on below deck? And how do green yachties somehow slip by? Well, that's that's definitely two questions. And let yeah. me say that um the hiring that's done on below deck is very different than than it is on board real yachts. Right. If if it's going to be on um, deck crew that are qualified and of course they have to have those they need to have a minimum of the um, basic educational and uh, safety regulations that's called stcw that's about a mm -hmm. week-long course that you can take in most major port towns like fort lauderdale or antibes or palma de mallorca you can get them in south africa you can get them in the uk so you have okay. to have stc stcw mm -hmm. if you're going to work on the interior you have to have the cleanliness and sanitation that's called eng1 so anybody whether you're going to be on below deck or whether you're going to um work on a proper yacht you have mm -hmm. to have those qualifications and then it goes on from there uh, you know everything from hospitality background of course if you're going to be a chef or an engineer um, you need to have qualifications for that specifically. Um, anything, um, you know, like uh, languages or any other skills, you know, certainly yeah. let's talk about mm -hmm. the stewards department, whether that's a bartending or a table setting or napkin folding or flower arranging, um, mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of things. And as far as green crew goes on below deck, I don't really deal with that very much. It's, it's Those are put on TV. there in order yeah. to add drama. And, yeah. um, you know, hopefully they have the potential and the taste that they've gotten of yachting um, makes them eager to work on yachts full time. And I do know that some of the crew people that have worked in um, on below deck have gone on to have really good full time yachting careers. And a yeah. lot of them have not. Right. Yeah. Malia comes to mind. I mean, she started with below deck and look at her now. She's like a first or second officer 
She is. I believe that she's a captain now. I, I know Malia as well. She's absolutely lovely. She was yes. very fortunate um, that she um, was able to be taken um, in the fold of Captain Sandy, who helped absolutely. her, not just in terms of her skills, but also in terms of being the right kind of person, um, yeah. you know, to be serious and um you know, Malia had qualifications before she came on board as a deckhand, and she has done remarkably well. I think she's an mm -hmm. asset to the industry. I mm -hmm. think she's a testament to Sandy yeah. and um, Sandy helping educate um, people and bring them along in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I wish that we had more people uh, like her in general in the yachting yeah. industry. And I wish that we had, I wish that Below Deck um, would be able to bring more people into the industry because the need for yacht crew is yeah. dire. Wow. That's really good to know. Cause I feel like there are a lot of people interested, but they just don't know how to get started. So I think this is really good information for them. Well, if they, if they're serious, they need to get their STCW and their EMG yep. one. Let me tell you what the best career in yachting is. Hmm. And that's as an engineer. If you yeah. have mechanical capability and that includes not just engines, but everything else, the ACs, the yeah. water systems, the lighting, the mm -hmm. electronics. If you have the interest to work in the yachting industry and work on board a yacht, as an engineer, they are the, the most critically necessary. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's face it, there's two hearts of a yacht, the engine room mm -hmm. and the galley. And both mm -hmm. of those share something similar, which is that those are generally single positions. So you can't run a vessel without an engineer and you damn sure can't run a charter boat. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. Um, but, and, you know, means... all the other all the other careers, you know, Malia is a great example. Many other, look at Culver, he's working on a yacht right now. Yeah. And it goes on and on and on. A lot of the uh, crew that you see on the show actually have, um, you know, serious careers of their own. The problem is if you're going to work full time on a yacht, that's a year to year job. You're not able yeah. to take the two or three months off that you need in order to work on below deck. So um, a lot of the crew that that we see regularly on below deck, you know, the ones that, you know, we know and love, you mm -hmm. know, like um, like Frazier or um, yeah. what is what is it they're calling him now? Not Fairport. They have another name for him. <laughs> sure. Oh. Fletcher, Fletcher, that's it. Fletcher. <laughs> and he's a, he's fantastic and he's had and he's had a great career and, he, and we've seen him yeah. um move up the chain of command and I think that's great. But um again, but, that's another yeah. big difference of below deck and full time jobs. And that's that you have to commit to a vessel. And if you want to have a serious long term career in the bus in working on board yachts or in the business of yachting, mm -hmm. um stability and longevity is one of the most important aspects that you need to have on your CV. Yes. Um, okay. So this is a fun question. I think you saw this on our Instagram at Shelby EVS 97 rates. Does Norma know about her watch what crappens feud with captain Sandy? <laughs> yes, I did see that. And I have to admit, I did not research that. I didn't even ask Sandy, you know, I'm not interested in knowing much about feuds. Um, I've been able to navigate my long career in yachting by being friendly with everybody. Yeah. So, you know, when it comes down to, you know, bad feelings and feuds, which I, I cannot even imagine. I mean, you well, know, let's face it, watch what crappens is, is hilarious in and of itself. Yeah. And um, I don't, I don't know the guys on there. You know, I, I, I watch it now and again. That you know, they nominated me for you know best supporting character, which I thought was absolutely <laughs> hilarious as well. Yeah. Apparently, I um, didn't win, which is okay. But I don't know yeah. anything about that feud, and I don't know if Sandy does either. Yeah. Well, I did research it because I also didn't know about it, and it's completely fabricated, as you know. And I'm going to play you just a couple minutes of a recording of them being you and Captain Sandy. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. 
So she texts Norma. She's like, God damn it, Norma. Could you get me an actual bosun this time instead of using your casting couch off Craigslist? I mean, yeah. good lord, I hope the lay was worth it. She's in crackers, woman. You're literally going to be the death of me. <laughs> hey, Sandy. Hey, Sandy, it's Norma. Listen, um, I'm sorry that didn't work out. I just like to save my good bosuns for the competent captains. Okay. But anyway, there's someone here who just oh, got gosh. off work from Starbucks. Do you want me to send them over? Okay. <laughs> that's well, that's hilarious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, funny. I mean, I guess, I guess that there are actually captains and maybe even um, agents that use the casting couch, but um, I can guarantee you that's definitely not my MO. I've been very we, happily married for 28 years. We figured years. not. Yeah. Well, it, go ahead it, and dispel that rumor, but. Oh yeah, absolutely. absolutely dis <laughs> it, 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 it is a complete absolute rumor. As I said, I've been married for 28 years to an absolutely wonderful guy. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, we've been able to travel the world together. And uh, I call him my antidote to yachting because he's in the music business. Uh -huh. And um, so, you know, one thing about yachting is it's all consuming. You know, when yeah. you work in the business of yachting, it's hard to talk about anything else. And so, you know, if you go to a dinner party or a boat show for people that are not in it, it can be absolutely boring and repetitive because all we can talk about is, you know, a, a boat that, yeah. you know, has a mechanical problem, uh -huh. you know, a, a charter situation that changed, somebody's looking for a job, somebody just got a job, you know, what boat show <laughs> is better than another one. And, you know, oh, we would be it, fascinated. We'd love to be at one of those dinner parties. I listened to all of that chatter, even if I didn't know what you were talking about. Absolutely. Well, listen, what you need to do is come along to a yacht show sometime and walk yes. the docks with Norma one day. Oh, um, we would literally people hire me to walk them around yacht shows in really? order to introduce them to um, the people that are truly important in the business of yachting. Um, oh my gosh. Besides a, a Sea Keepers Society, which is, you know, my heartthrob of um, the science of ocean conservation mm -hmm. and the importance that yachting um, brings to that. Um, I'm also a board member emeritus of the International Super Yacht Society, and that mm -hmm. represents the business of yachting. And I've been a part of that for over 20 years. And that has given me the opportunity to meet and know the most important people in the business of yachting, the CEOs, the CFOs, the COOs, mm -hmm. and the people that really make this industry work. You know, yeah. the builders, as I said before, the suppliers, the service people. And so if you need something done, or if you're trying to figure out what your best resource is, um, a lot of people, just like Sandy, call Norma. Yeah, you got to call Norma. I think I'm going to keep your <laughs> cell phone number in my phone just so I can be like, I have Norma's number. <laughs> a lot of people have that number. You know what Captain Sandy's nickname for me is? No. AskNorma.com. AskNorma.com. <laughs> www.asknorma.com. <laughs> well, we definitely want to come to a boat show. We kind of were thinking Fort Lauderdale at some point, maybe. Um, it's usually in like November, right? Fort Lauderdale boat show this year. I don't have the exact dates. I think it starts on October 31st, which okay. is always a very the very tail end of October um, into the first three or four days of November. And okay. Fort Lauderdale is great. It's the largest uh, yacht show in the world. Wow. Um, however, it's um, it's kind of a generalist show, so it um, doesn't necessarily concentrate on larger yachts or crewed yachts, which is always my priority. Um, they also have small boats, fishing boats, runabouts, sunglasses, fishing gear. So, oh. you know, it's oh, wow. it's really big in terms of, you know, the variety of the entire maritime scene. Yeah. Um, if you want to concentrate on professionally crewed yachts, then you'd need to go to um, the Cannes Boat Show, the Monaco Yacht Show. Of course, Cannes is in France and Monaco. Well, if we have to. Monaco. Have to. Or the Palm Beach Boat Show, which we just finished two weeks ago. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll but I love the Fort Lauderdale schedule. Boat Show. Don't get me wrong. That's where you get to go to all the big fancy parties. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll definitely let you know. Hopefully it won't conflict with BravoCon this year but 
that's definitely on our list. Well, Norma, well, this is I've been... never been invited to BravoCon, so it sounds absolutely great. And you oh, know, I think so it's fun. about time they invited the real Norma to attend. Right, Bravo, you could be you? at Captain. You could come Sandy's with us booth like <laughs> yeah that would be such a highlight for people they'd be like oh my gosh norma is real <laughs> that would be so i think cool. the secret is out um you know yeah. we're not trying to hide anything um <laughs> yeah. i love the show i love the show i support the show i support yeah. captain sandy and all the rest of the captains um nadine does an absolutely fantastic job as a production oh my gosh she's such a hard-working woman um, yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm there to portray the positive side of um, Below Deck and mm -hmm. the yachting industry. So I'd be very happy to sh spread that word anytime. Absolutely. Um, Fantastic. Well, Norma, thank you so much for taking the time to share about your career. It's so interesting. And this has just been really, really fun for us. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. I think you guys are great. I absolutely loved it when I watched you packing your clothes to go to BravoCon <laughs> this year. I thought that was was totally hilarious. And I congratulate okay. you on, on doing such a great job on your podcast. I hope you enjoy it as much as you seem to. We really thank do. Thank you so much. We do. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay. We'll have to do another That's great. packing Well, video. listen, you know, I do have to go because um, I have to go fix lunch for my husband, you know, because... Um, yes. One of the great things about working as a yacht chef um, was that it was something that absolutely fulfilled me, um, you know, uh, to the core of my being because um, I'm kind of a clean freak. I absolutely love to cook. I grew up in a diplomatic family and sailing is something that I absolutely adore. So working on yachts was, you know, a perfect fit for me and a little Norma, bit. I knew. You're such a cat. I turn it. I want to be Absolutely. married to Norma. I'm jealous of your husband. <laughs> Sorry, Detlef did that already. <laughs> Darn it. So, Great. all right. Well, well listen, thank enjoy you the so rest much. of your day. Oh, and send us any links that you want us to put in our resources in the show description, some of the organizations you mentioned. Yes, um, that'd be great. Love to thank you. Promote those for you. Great. Well, you know, again, you know, what's really important to understand is, um, it's not just all fun and games. The yachting yeah. industry has a great deal of capability to influence the world positively. Sure. Um, yeah. Whether it's education, like Sandy is doing, whether it's ocean conservation mm -hmm. and research, um, like the Sea Keepers Society does, mm -hmm. or whether it's the many organizations of yachting. One of the great ones that you ladies should join is the Association of Women in Yachting and come to one of their meetings at a boat show soon. Oh, that'd Get be cool. Down. All right. We'll write that Great. down for sure. Cool. Well, thank Excellent. you, Norma. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy lunch. <laughs> you take care now. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. That's it for this episode of Above Deck. As always, thank you to everyone at Heard at Media, especially Grace, and a very special thank you to Norma Treese for joining us today. That was so fun. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Don't forget to rate and review us. Five stars only. You can follow us on Instagram at Above Deck Pod and also email or leave us a voice memo at Above Deck Pod at gmail.com. You can always watch us on the Herdat Media YouTube channel as well. Until next time, I'm Kelly Busby. And I'm Sarah Goldman. See you next week. Remind me at the end to tell you something about the eclipse. To not look at the sun. <laughs> no, that's not it.